Hi, and welcome to Riddles in the Dark, where I endeavor to learn and explain the rules of the One Ring 2nd Edition role-playing game by Free League Publishing. As we saw in Part 1, we looked at the basic characteristics or attributes and the cultural background of the player hero. In this video, we'll look at how your player hero answered the call to adventure. Let us start first, however, looking at the target number, or TN, which sets the numerical value that your player hero will have to match or beat in order to succeed in a skill check, or combat attack, or a task. This TN number is calculated using the following formula, and it all depends on a number of factors. Depending on the length of the campaign that you're in, or if you're playing the Strider mode or solo play campaign, the TN value can be adjusted to better match the difficulty that would make the game more enjoyable for you and the other players. For a medium to long campaign, it's recommended to calculate the target number by subtracting the attribute scores from 20. So if we're Buren, we have the following TN numbers that we'll, we'll place here on the character sheet. As stated before, these numbers identify the number required to either match or succeed in a skill, combat attack, or task attempt. For shorter campaigns, one-shots, or if you're playing the Strider Mode campaign, the recommendation is to set the TN by subtracting the attribute scores from 18 instead of 20. Answering the Call Choosing a Calling Callings represent the starting drive that the player hero has that motivates them just enough to venture out into the wild from the comfort or safety of their home. This doesn't represent a profession or trade, however, but the sum of the ambitions and aspirations that eventually set them for a life on the road. Here are the list of callings in the core rulebook on page 44 that you can choose for your player hero. After reading through each description and having a player hero concept already in mind, will choose Scholar for Buren, as he is wanting to explore and learn more of the world around him, the history of his people, and uncover any hidden secrets that may help in bringing further peace and prosperity to Duran's folk. Callings further flesh out your player hero and grants the following. Favorite skills. Each calling lists three skills, and once you land on a calling you selected, you select two skills and mark them favored on your player hero sheet for your Buren will select Lore and Riddle. Additional distinctive features, your player hero shares a peculiar ability with others who follow the same calling, in the form of a unique distinctive trait. For scholars, this is Rhymes of Lore. As before, these distinctive features can be used, if and where deemed appropriate by the Lore Master, to grant inspiration for your player hero when using a skill, in this case, Lore. Shadow Path. An adventurer's shadow path suggests the individual fate a calling typically leads to if they fail to resist the shadow's influence during their adventures. We'll cover the mechanics of shadow and what happens to a player hero when the shadow overcomes them and the resolve in a later video. For the scholar calling, Lure of Secrets is the shadow path and we'll mark it down here on the player hero sheet. Previous experience. We say in the first video we start with a number of ranks and select skills that represents the baseline cultural focus for the player hero. The following represents the individual experience, knowledge, training that your player hero completed before setting out into the wild for adventure. Players have 10 points to spend on raising skills and combat proficiencies, or 15 points in Strider mode. There are two tables shown here that represent the cost in raising skills during initial creation, these values change once that campaign begins, and we'll covering that in a later video as well. You as the player can raise any skills you see fit, as long as you follow and pay points according to the tables. Note, you have to spend these points now during creation, and you can't carry over any to the start of the campaign. If you're Buren, we'll spend points as follows, and raise the following. Awareness, one rank for one point. Hunting, one rank for one point. Insight, one rank for one point, and Persuade, one rank for one point. Axes, from two ranks to three ranks, for a total of six points. Altogether, we have now spent ten points, as we were allotted. Starting gear. All heroes start their adventuring gear career fully equipped in personal items and gear considered suited for life on the road. 
In the One Ring RPG, it's represented by the adventurer's war gear, traveling gear, and any useful items. War Gear On page 73 and 100 of the core rulebook, there is a list of the available war gear that can be selected for your player hero. On Creation, you get to choose one weapon for each proficiency you have at least one rank in, and select their favorite armor, helm, or shield. Take note of any cultural or standing of li living limits that impact what you can choose for your player hero. For Buren, and because of his limits as dwarf, we'll select the long hafted axe and bow, and mark it in the corresponding section of the character sheet here. For armor, and taking note of both dwarf's ability to wear heavier armor and half the load rating, plus having a standard of living of prosperous, we'll select coat of mail and a helm as his favorite armor. We'll mark the choices on the sheet here. Traveling gear. It's up to you as the player, but it is assumed that your adventure, no matter the time of the year or weather, has the appropriate heavy or light clothes, jackets, boots, fur-lined clothes, etc. You don't have to annotate in detail on the sheet, and there is no load rating associated with it. But if you like, you can write down what your character is carrying. Useful items. Player heroes start off the game based on their standard of living with a number of useful items as listed here on the table that can be found on page 49 of the core rulebook. Useful items are any tool, instrument, or device that is carried to perform one or more specific tasks. Examples of useful items can be found on page 50 as highlighted here. Useful items are used outside of combat only and for the skills listed in the items description. Players are free to choose their useful items and possibly invent a reason why a particular object is so handy. Useful items can also be found in some form of perishable good as well. In this case, the player hero is considered to always have a supply that will last the length of the adventuring phase. When a player hero is making a role outside of combat using a skill associated with a useful item, and the lore master deems that this should grant the hero an advantage, the player hero gains 1d to that role. Note, only one item can benefit the same die roll. If you're Buren, and considering his standard of living, we get to choose three useful items. We'll mark them down on the appropriate section of this sheet here. Of note, your character can only have the maximum amount of useful items as granted by your standard of living. Therefore, Buren can only have a maximum of three useful items at one time, until such a point he achieves a higher standard of living through finding treasure during adventures. Hoppet Ponies and Full-Size Horses Mounts can help a player, hero, and company in many ways, such as having the time to complete a journey in days, and relieving the load when carrying back treasure from discovered troll horde. Again, much like useful items, selection of a mount and how well that mount is is based on your standard of living, as found here on this table from page 50 of the core rulebook. For Buren, we'll select a decent horse that he'll generally use as a pack animal. We'll mark it down here on the sheet, noting the vigor rating. You can check out on my video on the journey rules here that highlight the benefits of mounts during a journey. Starting Reward and Virtue At the beginning of the game, as player heroes are novice adventurers and yet to prove their worth, they start off with one rank each in both Valor and Wisdom, as noted here on the sheet. But, despite this, the player hero does start off with one re reward and one virtue to let you further flesh out your character and granting specific in-game events that helped in adventuring. Here is the list and corresponding pages that further describe each available section. Note, at this time, one cannot select any culturally specific virtues, as stated on page 81, until they have at least two ranks in wisdom. Fibiran will select the following rewards and virtues. Note them in the appropriate sections, as well as any effects and any changes the rewards or virtues grant to other items on the character sheet as noted here. We'll select Reward, which is Close Fitting Armor, add plus two the result of your protection roll, and a virtue of Mastery, choosing two skills and make them favored, which we will note on the character sheet here. Buren is almost not ready to go, but we still need to look at the company of player heroes as a whole, and in selecting a patron and safe haven for the group, a fellowship focus for the character, and calculating the fellowship score. We'll take a look at how to do this 
in a deeper dive into patrons in the next riddle in the dark video. I hope these series of videos are helpful in creating your player hero or the player heroes at your game table with you as lore master. If you do like these videos and the content I'm creating, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to help not only this channel grow, but to further spread the great tabletop role-playing game that is the One Ring RPG 2nd Edition from Free League Publishing. Thank you for watching. Cheers.